Hello, my name is Michael Beinsett. I'm the department leader for race engineering in AVL Racetech. And in this video, I would like to give you a quick overview over the vehicle and powertrain testing capabilities that we have in AVL Racetech. At first, if you look at the overview here to my left, you can see that we are providing testing for all elements of the power unit or the drive lane or even the driver up to the full vehicle and down to the component level. So this is how our test bed looks like. It's a multifunctional test bed. In this particular case, we have a full vehicle on the dyno, as you can see. So we essentially roll the car into the test bed. We remove the wheels and attach each corner to one of the dynos, which are those blue dynos, which you can see at every corner of the car. Each of those dynos has a maximum power of 1,200 kilowatts. So that's 2,400 kilowatts per axle which is needed because we can actually operate the brakes on the race cars that we are testing here. And the maximum braking power of high performance race cars is not very far away from those 2,400 kilowatts that I have just mentioned before. Also important is to mention that the dynos uh, provide the rotational inertia, which is very close to a real wheel. So that means we are losing no dynamics, for example, in shifting, upshifting and downshifting processes. What you can see at the top of the picture are two light blue blowers. We have several of those blowers. You can only see those two in the picture here. And they provide the cooling to our vehicle on the test bed. These blowers provide an air mass flow which goes with the vehicle speed. That means if the vehicle is accelerating, also more air mass flow will be provided to the vehicle. And by this means, you can check the cooling capacity and the cooling capabilities of your race car. If you look at the four corners of the car where the wheels are supposed to be, you see some metal boxes, which we call the brake boxes. These boxes we need when we are operating the real car brakes, on the one hand to contain the carbon dust which accumulates under braking maneuvers. On the other hand, these boxes are needed to keep the brake temperature in a reasonable range and provide the adequate cooling to have the brake temperatures where they need to be. At the bottom of the picture, you see those very large boxes. Um, in these boxes, we collect the brake dust and we make sure that the test cell is not contaminated with the brake dust. Also, when we are running with uh, combustion engines, we have an exhaust gas extraction, which you can see at the bottom of the picture. What do we do typically on this test bed with full vehicle testing? We typically provide either performance development or endurance testing, or we can do actually both. When we're looking at the dyno control modes, how can we actually drive the car at the test bed? We have several possibilities. One that we might use is what we call the lap replay. That means our customers give us either a speed profile or a throttle profile from a real racetrack that we are simply replicating. The other option we have is to use the AVL VSM race dynamic vehicle dynamic simulation on the test bed. And that has a couple of advantages. The first one is that the AVL VSM race driver model will react to every change that we do on the real unit under test on the real car. So if you imagine that, for example, your transient torque delivery of your power unit is modified through some settings, the driver will react to it and you will see the effects in terms of handling, in terms of lap time, for example. The other advantage is that if we are changing, for example, virtually the track grip by a couple of percent, the driver will also react to it and drive the corners with a different speed. So you achieve different speed profiles and you immediately see the effect of the changes in the results of your simulation file. And the third advantage is that we are able to modify a test sequence while the test is already running. What does that mean? For example, if you plan to do, let's say, a race start, then five race laps, then two safety car laps and another five race laps. That's the plan. We start with the race start and after three laps, after three race laps, you decide to do the safety car lap as the next lap. And then we can do that. We can change the sequence to run a safety car lap next. And then, for example, we can change to another 15 laps uh, in race mode. So it is very flexible and allows the user a high degree of flexibility while the test is already running. So you can react to what you actually see on the data while the test is running. Testing on the test bed has a couple of advantages. The first one being that obviously we have high precision measurement equipment available at the test bed, which you do not have on the real car. 
So you gather a lot of data that you cannot record when you're on the track. We, of course, have highly repeatable conditions. This is a controlled environment. We are not at the track where we have different temperatures, um, different grip levels. You have other competitors on the track that might disturb your program. So you're on your own, you have very repeatable conditions. In contrast to a racetrack, we can provide 24-7 testing for our customers. Typically, when we speak about 24-7 testing, our customers would actually run the car for about 16 to 17 hours per day. And then the rest of the time is really used to service the car, to do maintenance on the car, because the mileage that we accumulate on the test bed is typically larger than what we accumulate on the real test track. And finally, most of our customers treat testing in our test bed like a real track test. That means they come with a very large engineering force and we are able to accommodate that engineering team in a very large room which is adjacent to the test bed and allows easy access for the test bed. On this slide, I would like to show you a speciality of AVL Racetech where we couple the test bed, the vehicle on the test bed, with the driver and the loop simulator, the DL on the other side. So we have a real car on the test bed and we have a real driver in the DL, in the driver and the loop simulator. And then we couple those two elements by using the AVL VSM race vehicle dynamic simulation. Um, so there is a feedback loop between the unit on the test, the car on the test bed, which is provided to the driver inside the DL. And then the driver has actually a hydraulic brake line running from his pedal down to the real car. So if the driver jumps on the brake in the driving simulator, he's actually actuating the brakes of the real car and slowing it down, which provides a very precise feedback for the driver in terms of stability and handling under braking, which is very important for the confidence of the driver and therefore also for the lap time. Now I would like to give you a bit of information about the brake testing that we offer at AVR Racetech. In our case, brake testing can either happen as what we call a single corner brake test or a full vehicle brake test. In the single corner brake test, which is described in the upper part of the slide, we can do all the essentials of brake characterization, like brake, brake padding, the characterization of the brake disc and the brake pads. We can do brake energy measurement. We can determine thermal coefficients for the temperature between the tire and the rim and the tire heating. And we can also, of course, do a durability test to see if your brake is up to the job for an endurance race. If we are doing the same thing, not with a single corner setup, but with the full vehicle, we can do all of the above. Plus, we can also look at brake balance optimization, a brake torque model, and the brake by wire optimization, which is obviously very important in most of the hybrid and full electric applications. The brake balance optimization is something very interesting because typically at the racetrack, what you measure is a brake pressure balance because those are the numbers that you have available. But in reality, what we're interested in is a brake torque balance, which we can determine at the test bed because we have the according high precision measurement equipment to do so. This would be a typical setup for a single corner brake test. As you can see, we have here a brake box for safety and for dust reasons. And we have a high dynamic dyno, which uh, can provide up to 1200 kilowatts of power. And we have uh, a cooling for the brakes, which go up to 330 kilometers per hour and change the mass flow with the speed of uh, the vehicle or the unit on the test. We obviously have a lot of high-end instrumentation on the test bed, for example, temperature sensors, optical and thermal cameras, and very precise torque measurements, which is ultimately necessary to provide the results that we're looking for. With the single corner brake testing, we typically devise what we call a brake torque model. That means we have a testing program that we run through, so we are gathering a lot of data with your brake system, and then we analyze those data and create a model of the brake torque. So that means we use either neuronal networks or polynomial approaches to create a replication of the brake torque that we have measured with the system in the model, in a very similar fashion to how you characterize a tire, for example, with the Pacheco equations. We do the same for the, for the brake system. And the brake torque model that we are getting out of such a test is typically very, very precise 
is within a very fine margin with uh, the real break torque that we see on the unit under test. And this is something that you can also run um, in your ECU as a model to predict what break torque will apply in the next corner or in the next straight. Finally, let me give you a very quick introduction into the, the drive line testing, drive train testing. We provide static and dynamic measurements, including the full track simulation, again with our vehicle dynamic simulation, AVL VSM race. We have the conditioning units for water, oil and air, if this is required. And we offer high precision instrumentation, which is part of the test bed in terms of torque measurements, speed measurements, temperatures and vibrations. We also provide durability testing, so you can run 24 hour testing if that is required. We have a lot of experience when it comes to differential characterization and we also have done quite a lot of work when it comes to the development of efficiency and friction in different gearboxes and differentials. So this was a very quick run through our testing capabilities for powertrains and vehicles. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much.